Like is everybody doing today? This is L.A. Kendrick with another tale from the vault of Would You Dare. So technically, I'm just going to reach again, I'm just, as I normally do, I'm just reaching in and finding articles and titles about the supernatural, uh, aliens, um, cryptids, things like that, man. Again, just for the fans to keep you guys in the loop and make sure that um, I'm giving back as much as I can because a lot of times uh, the fans go unappreciated. But today we're going to talk about um, I came across an article. I just picked it up. I came across an article about they're talking about cloaked individuals or cloaked entities, right? And these entities are like they say they cloak like the predator. If you guys ever seen the movie Predator, then you know what I'm talking about, right? And there's a number of cases where people say they've seen these things. And again, this is just you know again for fun and entertainment. Uh, I don't know if these things are true. I have no idea. I have no clue. But in the meantime, between time of getting those um, books published, you go, you guys like, share, and subscribe, please. Um, I think we're like, I know I say we were like maybe at one short yesterday, but basically we're like five short to be able to live stream on YouTube. And then that way we can do Q&A with, uh, with the fans. So if you're a true fan of what I'm trying to do here or what I'm doing here or what I've done over these uh, past over this past decade with the work, then you guys, uh, please uh, like, share, subscribe, and, and, and uh, comment. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the first one. This is a couple of them. So I'm going to just try to read um, this article, right? It goes, encounters with, encounters with strange entities and creatures can really run a range between almost the almost plausible to the flat out absurd. From time to time, there appear, there appear out of the blue such bizarre cases that seem to be without any precedent or reason. Among these must surely be those reported reports of beings or entities that seem to have some sort of inv invisibility technology and which appear to be something much like or akin to the cloaked aliens of the popular movie Predator, that movie franchise, with which they are often compared. And so here we are. Take a look at the very weird world of strange entities which seem to be able to make themselves invisible and which skirt around past our ability to comprehend them. Um, on the October podcast, on the October 26, 2014 podcast, paranormal radio show, Coast to Coast AM, there was a breathless caller who called in with quite an amazing tale indeed. According to the caller who identified himself as Greg from Dobson, North Carolina, he had a rather remarkable encounter in 1993 or 94 with what can only be described as some sort of entity with an invisibility cloaking device while he was living in Nashville, Tennessee. He claimed that he had been walking his dog one evening when he felt the distinct sense of eyes boring into him from beyond his perception. Although no one else seemed to be there, he says, what happened next? I started looking at some woods down in the woods directly in front of me. And I couldn't see anything, but I could hear leaves rustling in the trees. So I started looking up towards the tops of the trees and, it, and I had a very good look straight at, I mean, had very good eyesight at the time. I didn't do drugs. I didn't drink. I saw something crouched down on the top of the trees. The only way I could describe it, and I don't even know if the movie had come out yet, so... I didn't know anything about it, but the movie Predator, where they saw that invisible creature, you could see the outline of everything, but you could see what you could see right through it, and it was sitting up in the very tops of the trees where it wouldn't hold the weight of a man by any means. This thing was big as a man. I just stood there looking at it, and then I let go of the leash, and I took off at a dead run and yelled, hey, and I took off at a dead run towards this thing. And it started running across the tops of the trees. It ran the length of a football field in just in just no time. I mean, it was really fast. I don't know how it was running across the tops of the trees, but I know what I saw. After I thought about it, I thought, what in the world are you doing chasing this thing? I stopped and it stopped about the length of a football field away from where it started. And it turned around and looked at me again. And then it took off through the woods, through the tops of the trees and out into the woods. And I didn't see it again. It scared the hell out of me. 
I know that. And I never told anybody about it because I, I thought people would think I was crazy as a loon. Hmm. It's, it is almost absurd, borderline ridiculous account dripping with the sort of oddness that gets such strange reports thrown into the bin of loonies. But the, career, but the caller seems sincere, and amazingly enough, it is by far not the only such report of its kind. There have been numerous other accounts of what seem to be invisible biological entities of some sort. Another report comes from a witness on Reddit who says she had, an odd, she had her odd experience when she was around five years old meeting something apparently not of this world, or at least the world as we know, know it. And even odder still, it would go on to be a reoccurring thing in her life. She says of, a fir of, of her first brush with this unearthly presence. All right. So this is another one. Okay. She said she'd been, pl I'd been playing out for quite, I've been playing out for quite a while because I remember I had a pretty decent sized hole going when something caught my eye up in the tree that I was next to. I almost didn't know how to explain it. I almost don't know how to explain it, but it looked like almost a heat wave coming off the branch of the tree. It was fall. I remember this because I had all, I had my pink jacket on. and remember thinking that my mom was going to be pissed because I had dirt around the bottom of the arms from digging. I also remember there being a lot of leaves on the ground. Anyway, I'm staring at this heat wave and, and realize it has a human shape. So here I am five years old and wondering why is there an invisible man in the tree? I remember feeling scared, but unsure of what to do. Then it started moving and making a faint clicking sound. And if you remember the movie Predator, they, the Predator makes that clicking sound. That is about the time I decided that I was not supposed to be seeing this. And I hightailed it back to the house. My grandmother had seen I was pretty shaken and remember telling her that I just seen an angel. In my five-year-old mind, I didn't know what else it could be. I never heard of aliens or ghosts or monsters, so it made me think it. So to me, it had to be an angel because that's all my little mind could think of. Huh. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty incredible. It's a good story. Um, she said she had another one in 2004. Uh, she had three kids at the time, and she had moved into a new place next to the town over and was settling down. To begin a new life when the when the, when the strange came for her once again. She describes her new place as being on the outskirts of town, on the fringes of of a woodland of woodland, and says of what happened. One night I was up late doing laundry and stuff. After the kids went to bed, I decided to take a smoke break before I myself went to sleep. I am back there on the porch and I started hearing this faint clicking sound. I immediately looked to the ditch because I'd seen a groundhog out there a few days before and thought perhaps he was out there again. The yard is faintly lit from the outside light that is by the playground that is to the right of my, uh, my back porch. I didn't turn my porch light on. I didn't normally. If I was just going to go, if I was just going out for a quick smoke, I didn't see any groundhog or movement from the ditch. So I got back and got back to smoking my cigarette the faint clicking sounds keep happening and a slight shift of movement makes me look up into the tree to the left of my porch. It's there. But they be they be really the editing sometimes on these uh on these things are pretty 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 tough. So bear with me. I'm reading this as, as I'm as I got this, I'm just reading it to you guys and I have a chance to uh do anything else as far as uh making sure that I look through all the tough spots. Okay. The same invisible thing I'd seen when I was five. It's like a distortion and a humanoid shape. It's crouched down on the branch with an arm out holding onto a trunk of the tree. I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this happening? Has it came to kill me from seeing it all those years ago? I could think about, all I could think about was my kids in the apartment sleeping. I ran in and slammed and locked the door. I ran to the kids' room and made sure all the windows were locked. Then I just turned off the lights in the living room and stared out the blinds at the tree to see if I could catch another glimpse of it. I sat there for a good 10 minutes and I couldn't see anything. I began to, I began to think, am I just tired and my mom was playing tricks on me? Just as I was finally talking myself down, my neighbor's dog comes running across the yard and starts barking at the tree at the, at the same branch that I had seen this predator thing. 
that pretty much freaked me out because this dog was not a barker. I actually have never heard him bark at anything, even at the groundhog that had been hanging out at the ditch. This barking went on for a few minutes until I hear the neighbor lady who owns the dog call him back inside. The dog reluctantly turned to go back home, stopping every few feet to look back at the branch of the tree until it was out of my sight. I didn't sleep that night and have never seen anything like it again. So, yeah, that's, uh, hmm, that's pretty intense. And here's another one from a man out of uh, Washington State. He said he'd been out on a, on a patrol. I guess he was doing, I guess he's a patrolman. Uh, something with security, obviously. He'd been on a patrol looking for clandestine drug dealers in the area when he had his meeting with the very unusual. As he was working his way through the trees, his rifle held close considering the in inherent dangers to what he was doing. Something decidedly out of the ordinary happened to him, he would say. Yeah, he's doing like ranger work or uh, force, ra yeah, force ranger work or you know, that kind of work. So that's why he was out there. It began late. It began in late July when I was forced to make a semi uh, semi regular patrols around the property on which I live. Heavily wooded, very hilly and wet with a creek and swamp at the bottom. When I was made aware of local drug addicts attempting incursions upon the property, as most of you likely know, drug addicts have a have a natural tendency towards violence especially the breed we have in my neck of the woods. I began carrying a rifle as I made my patrols because as the old agit puts it, better safe than sorry. Very quickly, I found their tracks at the bottom of the hill and even I, and I even managed to claim as a gas can as kind of property, as a kind of trophy, war trophy. That led me to believe they may be aiming to perform illegal logging on the property which intensifies my patrols. Soon after, I ran into, I ran into a rather unsettling shape in the forest. I was on patrol. I was on another patrol, standard routine procedure. When I passed an ancient cedar tree, I passed it a million and a half times. But suddenly, I felt as though I would, I should take a seat underneath it and rest a while. I sat down under the under the tree boughs, the tree boughs and set my rifle and, and uh, day pack at my side. I sat in silence and stiff stillness for a while, taking in all the surround, all the sounds the woods have to offer. I almost felt as though I had entered the same state of Zen I had the, uh, the year previously, living beside a natural spring after a very heavy rain. All was well, the world was fine and everything would be okay. I felt wonderful. I opened my eyes and rolled my head to my right to look out into the, a grove of uh, adult, adult, adler trees. Glancing upwards, I saw a humanoid shape. It was roughly 15 feet up in the air and had the distinct shape of a human head, neck, sh and shoulders, but no discernible bottom. It seemed to fade away. The only way I can describe it is similar to the Predator films in which the titular creature uses a... Um, a cloaking device. It was very, very similar to the device, and its edges seemed uh, seem reality itself was embossed in that shape. I sat and, st and stared at it for probably three to five seconds before an overwhelming feeling of dread and anxiety overtook me. I should add that I'm very tough to tough to genuinely scare. I've been through a great many nasty situations that don't bear mentioning. And suffice to say that this shook me to my very core. I was almost petrified, scared out of my mind of what would happen if I dare move. I finally mustered the strength to remove my glasses and wipe them on my shirt and redawning them. I could see the shape was still there. The dread grew in intensity tenfold every few seconds. And my natural, calm, rational mind took hold again. I began counting down in my head. Uh... What happened next, you may be asking? Well, although the witness did not stick around long for this particular encounter, he did manage to make his way back to the same area in later days and discover um, an anomalous hole in the ground shaped like an L, surrounded by large, inexplicable scratches where it would, be, it would become incredibly windy 
whenever he drew near, he says of this strange detail. Hmm. Okay. The hole is the the hole is the, at the the hole is at the bottom of a ravine filled with large old growth growth trees. It suddenly got terribly windy when I was there. If stormy days are anything to compare, I would say winds were reaching 30 to 40 miles per hour. At the bottom of the ravine filled with wind blocking trees, temperature felt like it dropped by about 20 degrees as well. I've been I've been back since, but not often. Each time I only visit, I say aloud, whatever is there does not have my permission to come with me back to my house and most assuredly nowhere else I go. Uh, and that's, that's all I'm going to read because there's a couple of more and I don't want to butcher the language of the grammar any more than what I'm doing already, right? And so there's a guy named, again, David Pilatus that he actually has um, a story in one of his, uh, uh, what is it, the 411, Missing Persons. He's actually got footage and he's talked to some people, a lady in particular that was out hunting and she she caught one that was in the tree and it was moving. If you saw the original Predator move, you'll see where um, it was crawling over Arnold to try to kill him, but he had the mud on him. He's camouflaged through the mud. So she, she mentions uh, that's what happened to her. And uh, she's even got pictures of it on her, on her cell phone and it's been verified by the agency that she took her phone to to make sure that uh, it wasn't just a blip or something, a blob squatch, even though she saw it herself with her own two eyes, she uh, let them know that, hey, this is what she saw. So again, again, these are just stories, you guys, to uh, keep you engaged and keep you entertained. So when you, if you're bored, you can just pull up one of these uh, clips that we're doing and videos that we're doing and just uh, kick back if you're on your lunch break or you're just bored or what's going on or what have you, right? Or you just want a quick thrill. Um, I'm trying to provide that avenue for you. So like I say, like, comment, subscribe. Would you guys uh, dare dare be want to be caught in a position like these people were? And again, this is just, I think I just read maybe three or four, I think. But there's way, there's like maybe two more after this one. But um, again, I'm tired of butchering the language. And uh, I'm hoping that you guys are going to have a great rest of the day. Again, please, uh, we need a few more, we need about five more people on YouTube to make sure we solidify that, you know how people... We'll jump in and then they'll drop, they'll drop the subscription so that we can actually talk about these things in Q&A when we actually have a, have a chance and go live. That's what we're trying to do, make sure we can go live and I can talk to you guys. You can pick my brain, I can pick your brains about the numerous topics that we talk about on my channel and in my books, okay? So with that being said, you guys, make sure you check your closets. Make sure you check the dark recesses of your rooms. Make sure that if you work at night, you check under your cars or if you work late into the mornings where there's no visible or hardly any light outside. Don't be lazy because you never know what's waiting in the darkness to make you a story. And this has been L.A. Kendrick with another tale of Would You Dare? You guys feeling the rest and y'all be safe. Thank you.